Welcome to Love and Abuse, the show about helping you identify poisonous communication and toxic behavior. You deserve to be treated with respect and kindness. That's why it's important that you learn to pinpoint manipulative and controlling behavior so that you keep your power and your sanity. I'm your host, Paul Coliani. Welcome to another episode. As you heard, my name is Paul. I am so glad you are here. And if you are here, you are probably wanting to learn something about a relationship that you're in. And uh, maybe you want to find out if the relationship is experiencing any type of control, manipulation, or emotional abuse. And there are many ways to talk about emotional abuse. There's a big bucket of terms that you've probably come across, like psychological abuse, verbal abuse, um, even domestic violence. I mean, domestic violence is part of the emotional abuse bucket. So um, if you are here for any of those, stay strong, (laughs) stay strong and have confidence or start to build confidence in yourself. And uh, that's one of the things I want to do on this show is to help you build confidence in yourself, help you make decisions that are right for you, put you on a course so that you are no longer in a toxic environment. And that doesn't always mean you have to leave or separate or never see the person again. And sometimes it does. But my goal is to get you out of a toxic environment. And sometimes you can do that by creating an environment that's not toxic. And you might think, well, I'm not the toxic one. I I can't create it or stop it from being toxic. I'm just hoping that this other person will stop being toxic. And um, my goal is to help empower you so that you can show up in a way that doesn't facilitate any toxic behavior or enable it. Sometimes we enable toxic behavior when we're being our kind, generous, supportive, caring, loving selves. So we have to be very careful how we approach toxic people, and that can sometimes change the toxic environment. I mean, not only approach them, but react to them or respond to them. So that's something you can gain on the show as well. And those of you who have been listening for a while, you know all of this, but there's a lot of new people that tune in and they want to know what they're getting. This is what you're getting, and I hope a lot more than just that. And uh, like I say in every show, All the information on this podcast is meant for educational purposes only. Always seek a professional for your mental health and well-being, and always pick your battles wisely. Today I'm going to read you a message that uh, is very important. I mean, they're all important, but this is really pushing the envelope in some of the trouble they're having. So I'm going to read this and see where we can go with it. Dear Paul, I'm new to your podcast, but every episode seems like it hits home. My question is, I've been chemically addicted to opioids most of my life, but uh, lately the addiction has become the star athlete of our relationship. Everything that happens, I get blamed for, or my problem is dragged uh, center stage. On the flip side, without this, I'm not my normal self. Uh, I've used the opioids to drag through this relationship. I'm responsible for every little thing, the house, the kids, his parents, his paperwork. I could cook dinner every night and no matter what I do, it's never enough and it's never good enough. He knows I've gone through sexual abuse as a child and he often says that's the reason why I am the way I am. He even went as far as saying it was consensual. (sighs) Not only have I been through emotional abuse, through this relationship, but I've also experienced physical abuse. Between the two, I have no sanity left, and I'm beginning to think that I'm not worth loving, and this does get worse, but my question is, when I try to leave, he doesn't let me go. I experience extreme stalking until I give in, and he tells me he hates me, and I'm not attractive, and I don't do anything he says. He wants me to leave, but when I try to leave, his whole attitude changes. He loves me, and he needs me. And it's not even a couple days before I give in. I go straight back into feeling unwanted. What do I do to show him he's driving my addiction to overload 
That's when I want it most, as it seems though it's the only thing that makes me happy anymore. Am I crazy? Am I the problem? Is he right about everything and I shouldn't be trying so hard? I'm so lost, hurt, and confused some days. I know I'm over the top good, and some days I just don't want to wake up. Please help. Taking a moment to soak that in. That is a lot. I mean, there's a lot to deal with there. And um, I have one answer that just comes to mind straight away, and that is you are with probably one of the worst people that you can be with. Um, I never say anything like that. I, I don't come on the air and say anything like that because I like to give everyone a chance. And I shouldn't even say he's one of the worst people, but he's doing many of the worst, the most awful behaviors anyone could do to someone. And that is making you feel as if it's your fault making you, as the victim to his hurtful behavior, making you believe you deserve it and you caused it. I mean, that's not even the worst part. The worst part is that you have already been through the ringer. You've been sexually abused and you have been emotionally abused by him. And not only that, physically abused by him. So he's pulling your strings at every single angle. You have nowhere to turn, nowhere to go. You probably feel completely trapped by this person who, for some reason, you're putting any amount of time or energy into. And I say that because when you put this much time and energy into someone like this that puts you down, that makes you feel bad, that hurts you, that blames you, uh, even for things that happened to you in your past that you had no control over or were coerced into or were manipulated into, all of this adds up to someone who is taking advantage of you in every way at every angle. And not only that, they're mistreating you, they're hurting you. So again, I don't come on here and say this lightly. You never hear me talk badly about anyone unless they are just very dangerous. This person is dangerous. If you haven't read my article on theoverwhelmedbrain.com called A Near Miss Still Leaves a Mark, I highly recommend you do it. I wrote about when my stepfather threw a hammer at my mom. She told me this story a few years ago, and she said, you know, he threw a hammer at me, and she laughed about it, and I said, Mom, he could have killed you. I said, if that hammer hit your head, you would have been dead. If not dead, seriously injured, but you probably would have been dead. And she looked at me, and I think for the first time, she realized the seriousness of the situation. So I want you to read that article. There's something that happens when you're in an abusive relationship, and I've talked about this before, but when you're in any type of emotionally or physically abusive relationship, your level of tolerance and resilience builds, and it continues to build as your self-worth and self-esteem diminish and as you accept worse and worse behavior. And what I mean by that is someone calls you a bad name, someone you care about, someone you believe cares about you. They call you a bad name and you think, wow, that really hurt and I wish they didn't call me that name and maybe you'll cry. Maybe you'll yell at them and say, I can't believe you called me that. Don't ever do it again. Whatever happens, whether they apologize or not, by staying with someone like that, sure, you can give a free pass. Maybe they were angry, but if they do it again, and you are still there, and there is no accountability for it, if they don't have to lose something for doing that to you, for calling you a bad name, that creates in their mind a level of permission to do it and to continue doing it. And what that does is it opens the door to the next level of permission for something else. So they call you a bad name, 
you might get upset. Maybe you'll hold it in. Maybe you'll scream it out. Maybe you'll tell them never do that again, but they do it again. And then they do it again, but then you start to get used to it. You realize that this is just how you argue, or this is just how they communicate. So you start to build a resilience inside of you for bad behavior. And then one day they push you. Let's just say they push you and you hit the wall and you're shocked. You can't believe they would do anything physical like that. But, you know, you give them a little break. Maybe they were upset. Maybe they had a bad day at work. And so it doesn't matter if you repress some negative emotions and you think, I hope that never happens again, or you scream or yell at them. If there's no accountability for that behavior, then it opens the next level of permission for them. They believe they have permission to do that. And so what happens is if they push you again and there's still no accountability, now they realize they can do that in the relationship. So now they can call you names and they can push you. Um, Let's just say that not only does the person push you, but they squeeze your arms really tight. I'm so mad at you. Now you're thinking, oh my God, they just squeezed my arms. That hurts so much. Oh, I hope that never happens again. And then it happens again. And then one day they slap you. Now it's serious, right? I mean, it was serious before, but there wasn't any accountability. So those levels of permission kept opening and kept graduating higher and higher to the point where now they're slapping you. They're pushing boundaries like a child. A child will push boundaries to find out how far they can go. If I'm in the kitchen, I don't get in trouble. If I'm next to the counter, I don't get in trouble. If my hand is on the counter, I don't get in trouble. If my hand is on the counter touching the cookie jar, well, I might get talked to or looked at, but I don't get in trouble. If my hand is inside the cookie jar, I might get yelled at, but I don't get in trouble. If I grab the cookie and it's in my mouth, oh, I get in trouble. Okay, so they pushed the boundary to the point where they found out at what point they get in trouble. But when you're an adult, these stakes are much higher and the danger level is much higher when someone's doing bad behavior. So the person slaps you across the face and you think, This is the worst thing that could possibly happen. And so you can see the level of escalation. And then all this stuff has been happening. So when they squeeze you hard or squeeze your arms or grab you in a way that hurts you, at least they didn't hit me. You can tell how this poisonous thought process starts in your mind and you start accepting all these levels of abusive behavior. And this is where the process of self-disintegration takes place. You are slowly or sometimes quickly disintegrating who you are. You are coring out your insides, meaning you are becoming less and less of who you are and more of who they want you to be, which is a completely subservient and submissive, controllable person that doesn't really have a mind of their own. They are programming your mind to become who they want you to be. And so this is what happens, especially with physical abuse, but even the typical emotionally abusive relationship is that the person will push the boundaries to find out your level of tolerance and resilience. And when they find out they can get away with one thing, they do the next, and then they do the next, and then they do the next. And so if you never show them accountability, if they never experience any loss, And I tell you what, there are some people that don't care if you're crying, if you show pain, if you are visibly hurt or emotionally hurt. That is not accountability to some people. That will not work for some people. Because I've I've seen that all too often. You know, I, I cried. They can tell I was hurt, yet they still did it. That's because it's not accountability. Accountability is something real, some sort of loss that when they lose it, they will experience pain of some sort. That loss could be anything from leaving for a month, uh, withholding sex if it's a romantic relationship, staying with a relative, staying with a friend, whatever it is. But they need to know that you are serious and you're not going to take it. You're you're not going to sit there and take their bad behavior. And it's important 
that you gauge your level of resilience and tolerance. You know, how bad does it have to get before you eliminate the toxic behavior? Because, like I said, the person who's toxic is not going to stop being toxic unless they realize there's a loss involved. If they know they're going to lose something, then they may decide to change. But you have people like this, the person who wrote, she says that the person she's with, he will act sad, he will act remorseful, he will act like he needs her and he loves her and probably say things, all the things that she wants to hear, and it probably sounds so caring and supportive and loving, and then she gets sucked right back into a relationship that is destroying her soul. I mean, I'm going to just lay it out there. It's destroying her. This is destroying you. This is why you feel like you're going crazy because you are in a highly radioactive relationship and you are continuing to get burned day after day after day. So of course it feels like you don't want to wake up because who wants to wake up to this? And I'm not saying that I don't want you to wake up. I definitely want you to wake up. I want you to wake up in a healthy environment. And I haven't even talked about your addiction because yes, it's a problem for you and it is your problem and you need to deal with it. And it is a challenge that is going to be very difficult, but this is something that you need to work on and absolutely get in control of your life. But sometimes the cart comes before the horse and sometimes the horse comes before the cart. And what I mean by that is sometimes you have to get rid of the addiction to get rid of the toxic relationship. And sometimes you have to get rid of the toxic relationship to get rid of the addiction. And what I will say is that when you have a relationship like this, where you keep going back, getting rid of the relationship isn't working. And it's easy for me to say, yeah, just get rid of the addiction. I know it's not easy. It's not easy at all. Addictions are a, a different animal, but it will be easier when you're out of the relationship. Yes, I agree with you there. How do you do this? You know, when you leave a relationship this dangerous, and I'm going to repeat this, this is a very dangerous relationship. The hammer will hit your head one day. I am showing you tough love. This is a very dangerous relationship. The hammer will hit you and you will be so injured that you may not be able to wake up and it won't be a choice. This is something I want you to consider very carefully. Anyone who says that your childhood sexual abuse might have been consensual is a very dangerous person. A child convinced or manipulated by an adult to perform any type of sexual act is just that, manipulated. It is one of the worst forms of abuse. I mean, I know sexual abuse victims that believed that perhaps they consented or they should have fought it off more or maybe they even enjoyed it and maybe this and maybe that, but it doesn't matter. None of that matters. When you're a child and an adult does anything like that to you, it is abusive, it is manipulative, and they are a dangerous person. Even if they show up in a kind way, and I had a friend that said her dad showed up in a very kind way and made the sexual abuse a playful thing, a fun thing, and she had no idea it was sexual abuse until she was much older. It took her a long time to get past that because it's a mind F, if you know what I mean. It's that F word, mind. It is a mind job on you, and it screws with you, and it is total brainwashing. A lot of people are going to experience shame and guilt. You don't have to experience anything that you did wrong when anyone else was there to convince you, coerce you, manipulate you. None of that is your fault. It is their doing. They are dangerous and as a child, you could not have known what to do. You could not have known what was good and what was bad because adults are supposed to guide you. And if you did know what was bad, most of the time you feel like you can't do anything about it. So I just wanted to get on my soapbox for a moment and tell you that anyone that thinks that their childhood sexual abuse, if you've been abused like that, 
is something that might have been consensual or might have been pleasurable or might have been anything that someone might look at as a permission or agreement, it wasn't. It's brainwashing. It's called grooming. There are predators that groom the innocent. It happens in emotional abuse too. They groom you for emotional abuse the first few months of the relationship. They love bomb you. They gift bomb you. They tell you you're their soulmate. They tell you how wonderful you are and how supportive they are. You feel it. You feel like it's the best relationship you've ever been in. And all of that is part of the grooming process to get you in their trust. When you finally feel trusting and vulnerable with them, then this bad behavior starts coming out, but you've been groomed or conditioned to see their good side and and know that they're a loving person. So you believe that as the relationship continues, yet here they are showing up uh, doing bad behavior. In this person's case, the person who wrote, you have been groomed so badly, you have been conditioned so deeply that you believe that something in here is worth saving. And I got to tell you what, from what you shared with me, the only thing worth saving in this relationship is you. You are the only thing worth saving in this relationship. Or if you have kids, you and your kids are the only things worth saving in this relationship. If you're going to listen to any voice of authority, this is it. You need to save yourself here. And I'm not even worried about the drug addiction. I mean, I am. But I think that's going to take care of itself when you focus on yourself. And like you asked, what's the answer? How do I get away? Every time I get away, he starts stalking me. The only way to get out of a relationship like this is to go complete, no contact, and hide. That sounds awful. It sounds like you have to change your entire life. Yeah. I'm sorry. You have to change a big portion of your life. You have to hide from someone like this because that's what they do. They want to find you. They will figure out where you are. They will follow you on social media. They will call you. They will convince you. They will email you. They will text you. They will ask your friends. They will go to your work. They will do everything they possibly can to find you. You have to hide. That means no contact. If you don't know what that term means, look it up. No contact means blocking them at every single angle. And I mean, that's not the only thing. You might need a woman's shelter. You might need to go someplace that can protect you. You might need a restraining order. If there's been physical abuse, then you have every right to get a restraining order. And I'm not giving you legal advice here. I'm not qualified to do that. So I definitely recommend you talk to a professional, but definitely call a woman's shelter and ask them these questions because you're in a dangerous situation and all of these near misses are going to leave a mark because the ones that hit are going to be the worst ones yet. And the hardest part of this is you think this is hard and it, and it is, but this kind of situation always gets worse. It always gets harder. It always hurts more. You will not be able to survive this emotionally. And I hope that's the extent of it. But I, I want to tell you, this is a very difficult situation. I know it is, but you're not in a position to go back into a situation, back into that radioactive environment where you will clearly continue to get burned until you have nothing left. And I know this is easier for me to say than for you to do. And I also know that you need some good news and you need some motivation and you need some inspiration. And I'm here to tell you that someone who writes what you wrote here, someone who still has hope, that really wants to find happiness, that really wants to reconnect with herself, that means there's a part of you that wants a better life so badly that you're reaching everywhere out into the universe for answers. You're reaching out, which means there's still an amazing person inside of you that is absolutely kind, caring, supportive, lovable, worthy, important. All of that is still in you. You are all of those things and more. But what happens when you're with someone who pretends to love you so that he can control you you get conned. And that's really what this comes down to. You're being conned. 
this is a con game. And I don't say that to make you feel stupid because we've all been conned. <laughs> this isn't something that's unique to you. This is just something that happens. Somebody comes along and they find out all your weaknesses, all your vulnerabilities, all your strengths, and everything that makes you wonderful, and they use it all against you. You are compassionate, so he uses your compassion against you. You're kind, so he uses your kindness against you. You feel bad if you think you did something to someone, so he'll use that against you. He knows you're going to feel guilty if he says certain words or does certain things. He knows all of it, and it's so hard to see because you're so deep in it, and I want you to see it, and I know it's going to be difficult for you to see it, but you need to know. I've seen people in your place before with these same thoughts about themselves, about their relationship, about the futility of doing anything, yet they still got through it. And what happens when you leave a toxic situation like this is that around two or four months later, the fog starts to lift and you start to think for yourself without that person occupying every thought in your mind. You start to have your own ideas, your own thoughts of the future without the toxic element in it. And when you have those thoughts for the first time, you suddenly feel lighter and brighter and better in yourself. And when you feel all those wonderful things, everything that you used to think about yourself or about the situation while you were in the relationship you realize that you were only thinking like that because you were in the relationship. When you get out of the relationship and you start having thoughts that don't include any toxic elements, and like I said, it can take two to four months, sometimes longer, sometimes not, but when you start thinking without the toxic element in your life, you become so much clearer. Everything was so fuzzy before, but things become so clear. And then you realize, wait... I am a lovable person. I am worthy. I am compassionate. I'm kind. I'm caring. And of course, I'm a nice person. I deserve respect. I deserve kindness. I deserve to be treated as everything I talk about in the show is worthy and significant. And no, you're not going crazy. And you are definitely not alone. Everyone that listens to this show is on your side. And we know you can do this. But you are going to have some hard steps ahead of you. I'm not even worried about the opioid addiction right now. I just want you to get out of this dangerous situation, even though they're both dangerous. But what is in the front of the line, your relationship is at the front of the line. Because as that continues, you continue dissolving at the deepest level. And that hasn't fully dissolved because I can read between the lines in your message that you are still there. There's a part of you that wants more for yourself, a lot more. And she's still in there and she wants out. She wants to have that life. She wants to make things happen in her life. And she's going to need your strength. She's going to need your ability to take control of your life and know that everything coming out of his mouth, every behavior is a manipulation. And again, I don't normally say that. I think a lot of people that do emotionally abusive behavior, uh, some of them are unconscious uh, but the ones that are conscious of it and they know they're hurting you, those are the dangerous ones, absolutely. But the ones who are unconscious, the ones who have these emotional triggers from the past and they have terrible coping skills and they just do bad behavior until the other person finally leaves their life and they realize, oh, I've been terrible all this time. I'm going to change my life. I need to change my life. I hear from those people all the time. But I don't see that happening with this person. This person just does not sound like he has any interest in changing. All he does is change for the moment. He changes so that he can manipulate you back into the relationship to continue to make you think that there's a chance that things might get better. Take it from me. I've been doing this for many years. This is not going to improve. You need to remove yourself from this situation Find a place of safety so that you don't get exposed to whatever scheme he's concocting next. This is not a healthy situation for you. And let me say this one last thing, because you had a concern that uh, because your drug use or your drug addiction was center stage, 
that he has something against you. I guarantee you this. If you were able to stop your addiction and you showed up clean for three months, six months, one year, there would absolutely be something else he'd find wrong. He would absolutely find another problem that you caused. In fact, I know this is true 100%, and I'll tell you why. Because he's already blaming you for your behavior, for something that happened in your past that's not even happening anymore. This is why you are the way you are, he said. Your past is why you are the way you are. So even if you stop taking drugs, even if you were able to beat this addiction, which I hope you do, no matter what, doesn't matter if this relationship is in your life or not, even if you were able to beat this addiction, he's still going to use that against you and find other things to pin on you. He's going to say, you know, those drugs messed up your brain, but I'm not taking them anymore. They, you know, I'm okay now. I'm, I'm over the addiction. Yeah, but your brain's all messed up now. This is a power game some people play. They want to keep their power over you. And as long as you're in a weakened state, that is how they keep their power. So in answer to your final questions, am I crazy? No. Am I the problem? No. Is he right about everything? No. I am so lost, hurt, and confused some days, I know I'm over the top good. That is an absolutely true statement. You are lost, hurt, and confused some days, and you know you're over the top good. Yeah, you are. You are so good that you have developed this high resilience to bad behavior. And I, again, this isn't unique to you. This is something that happens. The kindest, most caring, most loving, most supportive, most compassionate people will get into the worst relationships sometimes because they're so compassionate that they allow the bad behavior in with the good. And you have to know your limits. You have to stop giving so many people the benefit of the doubt. You have to realize that there are people out there that do not have your best interest in mind and are absolutely nothing like you and are totally different in ways that you can't even imagine. And because of that, you will be taken advantage of, which is why it's important to understand your boundaries. Your boundaries are what you will and won't accept. Your relationship boundaries are what you will and won't accept in a relationship. Your personal boundaries are what you will and won't accept in your life. If somebody calls you a bad name, you should have a boundary set up that says, I will not accept being called bad names. Okay, set that up right now. I won't accept that. If that happens once, I'll give them a free pass. If it happens twice, I'll give them a warning. If it happens a third time, you're going to say, if you ever say that to me again, I'm out of here. That's it. You just lay that out there. You just put that out there. You make it happen. And then you follow through. Because the next time they call you that name or whatever boundary you set up, the next time they cross that line, they have to pay the price. There has to be accountability. Otherwise, the next level of permission is granted and they can do that behavior plus another one. And that's where the buildup occurs and that's how it gets worse and worse and worse. And that metaphor that we hear, the frog in the boiling water never knows it's going to die because the water gets so hot, even though I don't think factually that's correct, but we all know the metaphor. The frog's sitting in the water and the water starts to get hotter, but it happens at such a slow pace that the frog never jumps out and eventually, it sounds awful, boils to death. This is what can happen in a relationship. And it's a pretty effective metaphor. I think it works and uh, I think it's important to remember. And maybe it's time to look in your past, figure out when the first bad behavior started, write it down and, and take a note of your uh, level of tolerance and resilience and how it rose from that point on and from every subsequent bad behavior after that. And don't blame yourself. Don't put yourself down. Don't call yourself stupid or an idiot because you were conned. <laughs> you can't call yourself stupid if you were conned. The magician doesn't call their audience stupid. The magician knows the audience isn't stupid. The magician knows sleight of hand. 
the magician knows how to work the audience. I'm not putting down magicians. <laughs> I'm just saying, this is how you look at it, is that there are people that know the game. There are people that know how to play you. doesn't mean you're stupid. It just means you give most people the benefit of the doubt because you don't think most people are trying to con you. You really don't go around thinking they're trying to con me. They're trying to manipulate me. At least most people that I know don't think that. I've become a little paranoid sometimes. <laughs> I might think that person's trying to con me, but I've been studying this stuff a long time. I've been in it. I've written about it. I've taught it. Everything I know about it. So I'm kind of in a more aware state. But that's why I'm here. This is why I'm sharing this stuff with you so that you can be in a more aware state and more aware that you can also get yourself out of the game. You can get yourself out of the manipulation, out of the con, especially when it's gotten so bad, even though it can be very difficult to trust yourself and trust your instincts. But if you can relate to any part of this message, then heed my words, you know, hear what I had to say to this person. And let me give you this last bit of advice. This person who wrote, because there's been physical abuse, there will be more. That's not my advice, but my advice is just like I said at the beginning, pick your battles wisely. Do not engage with this person. Do not fight with this person anymore. Do what you can to get into a safe place. Go no contact. Fully block them. Do not look them up on social media. Do not find out what they're doing. Do not contact them. Do not answer anything from them. Do whatever you can to hide yourself from a person who does not have your best interest in mind at all. And I say this with all love and respect. Do not trust the words of somebody who is doing this to you. They are manipulative. Do not trust anything you hear from their mouth that doesn't uplift you or highlight you as worthy and lovable and significant. Because anything that makes you feel bad or guilty or that you're the cause of the problems, anything like that is abusive and a tactic. And you need to get away from anyone that mixes those two. This is called love and abuse for a reason. You cannot have both in a relationship. When you have love and abuse in a relationship, it is no longer a relationship. It is just a lousy existence that needs to change. And I started this episode saying that some relationships have to separate. Some have to get away from each other. Those people have to go their own ways. And some can resolve it. Some can stop the toxic behavior by making the other person accountable. And if the abuser realizes there's a serious loss for their behavior, and they also feel bad for doing the behavior and take steps to heal themselves, then maybe there's a chance there. Maybe that, that can work out. But in this particular case, with this person's message, this is not the kind of relationship that works out for the victim. It is not. And there's been so much damage that you don't even know what to believe anymore. Just believe me. Just believe me and know that you deserve so much more than this. I appreciate you. Thank you so much for sharing this. Stay strong and I wish you much healing through this journey. You will heal. You will get there. Share this with others on my benefit. Love and Abuse is the official podcast of The Mean Workbook, an assessment and healing guide for difficult relationships. The workbook provides an evaluation of your relationship based on a 200-point assessment. It's written for romantic relationships, but many have used it to determine if their family or others in their life are being manipulative or emotionally abusive as well. If you're in a difficult relationship and you'd like to pinpoint the unhealthy behaviors causing you to leave so many interactions feeling bad, and you want to know what your next steps should be, let the workbook guide you to discover the components of bad behavior and help you make the next best decision for you. Visit loveandabuse.com for more information. And if you've been called an emotionally abusive person or you've learned that about yourself and you'd like to change that behavior, sign up for the Healed Being program over at healedbeing.com. This show exists to remind you that you are not alone and you're not going crazy. You deserve to be treated with respect and kindness. You deserve honesty and sincerity. You deserve to be treated as worthy and significant because you are. Thanks again for joining me. We'll talk soon.